Tonight on Hotel Hell, I'm trying to breathe life back into a historic country inn. Yeah, that smell. Shit. The hotel's arrogant owner, Robert Dean II. I've always thought you should live with nice things if you can afford them. Treats the inn like his personal castle and treats his loyal staff with disdain. Go on, then, you pompous fuck. Excuse me. Don't talk to me like well, that. Well, what's wrong with it? Is this hotel beyond my help? I'm barely surviving, financially and emotionally. I mean, I'm going to lose everything. The historic Juniper Hill Inn sits on a hilltop above the quaint village of Windsor, Vermont. Built in 1902, the country mansion boasts 28 luxurious bedrooms and two grand dining rooms. It is filled with original works of art and antiques, all museum quality. Antiques dealer Robert Dean II and his boyfriend Ari Nicky bought the business six years ago. I've always thought that you should live with nice things if you can afford them. Oh, that piece looks good there, Robert. I thought you'd like it. The guests that we don't want here are people who don't have a lot of money. The inn may look the part, but despite Robert's dreams of an elite country estate, the hotel is barely functioning. Robert Dean has no hotel or no restaurant experience. The prices may be a little bit high for locals. $350. Two night minimum, so that's $700. $700? The lack of communication is very frustrating. Where are you? And I know the customers see that every day. I need my key, too. I, at this point, I can't even get in my room. <laughs> With bookings at an all-time low, the hotel is in serious financial trouble. But that doesn't stop Robert from living a millionaire's dream. Robert believes this place is his playground. <laughs> And a playground for his friends. He's got to have a lot of clothes made by him. <laughs> <laughs> he comps all their meals and rooms, but we never get tips. They're having a hard time paying me because they give away all of their money and food to their friends, showing off, using this as their private castle. With hardly any paying guests, it's no wonder that this inn is in the red. Yes, we are losing money, more or less like $200,000 a year. I think that the place is going to be closed, and it's, that's very sad. Gordon is going to come into this place and say this place is fucked. If I don't stop this business from bleeding money, it's doomed. I'd love to own an inn in a setting like this. If you get it right, you'd make an absolute fortune. Before I get to Juniper Hill, I want to find out what the townsfolk think of the local inn. Hello. How are you? Very well, and yourself? Yeah, rather. Well, I've been driving all morning. Um, how's Juniper? Hell in. You're going to love it. It's beautiful. And um, reputation? It tends to be a little on the high end for our area. OK. But I would love to have a place to go to locally. Do they not invite locals up there? I feel um, that I'd be interrupting. I feel like I'd be intruding. Oh, really? What a shame. Thank you so much. Have a great Best day and, and welcome you. to Windsor. Thank you very much indeed. Take Enjoy care. Enjoy your visit. Thank you. Here we are. Juniper Hill Inn. Now, who in the hell would bring an RV all the way up here and not stay in that stunning hotel? Look at it. My God, that's beautiful. Wow, OK, around to the front door. Can't believe they haven't cleared the snow for guests to come in. Wow. Oh. You're kidding me. It's locked. That's not very welcoming. Why would you have a big mansion that guests can't arrive through the front fucking door? Jesus, who wants to enter through the back door? Mr. Ramsey's here. I need you to do room one right away. Well, at least this door's open. Finally! Hello there. How are you? How are you, Mr. Ramsey? Like Gordon, please. Oh, oh Bloody Gordon. Hell, what a nightmare. I'm Robert it? Dean. Robert Dean. We, uh, were you over there? I, I was at the front door, yes. OK, this is actually our entrance. And in the winter, because of snow, really? we have to keep that locked. Because otherwise, the snow load comes off and kills people. Kills people? Yeah, it can. Have you killed anyone so no. far? No. <laughs> Where's all this stuff from? Um. 
An aftermath of an antiques fair. Yeah. This looks like it could be a beautiful room, but you can't tell because it's stuffed with so much clutter. That's the reception desk? No. My God, so what is that? That is our bar right now. You are kidding me. This is the bar? Yes. With what, that? Martinis. Martinis. Oh, yeah. God bless him. <laughs> Uh, made of pigs. Pig martini. Well, we have three rescue pot-bellied pigs. You have three pigs here? Right. What is that for? Were you born with this in your mouth? Yeah, don't I wish. Honestly? Uh, actually, no, that was a gift from... A giant. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Robert obviously loves to show off all his expensive antiques, but as a guest, I don't feel comfortable. I feel like I'm in a museum. This is the main formal dining room. This big chair here is for, for one? Uh, just kind of, we're known as a romantic destination and... Uh, <laughs> just out of interest, how Well, do... we would move the table. Uh, move it in for me, please? Yes. Wow, so you've got a sofa on the table. We thought it was kind of nice to have, like, a cosy banquette. Oh, well, three US presidents have dined here. Oh, really? Which ones? Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge. Teddy Roosevelt dined in here? Wow. I wanted to try to give him a little bit of sense of the history of Juniper Hill. Wow, OK, so that's the dining room. Well, we have two dining rooms. Oh, God. You must be busy with two dining rooms. Well, I wish we were busy. Bloody hell. We have spurts of being incredibly busy. Right. Uh, where we lack is all the other times. Really? Yeah. This place looks like a millionaire's mansion, not a struggling business. I've got to scratch beneath the surface. This place per week uh, is telling how much? We're lucky if we're doing, you know, 15,000 a month. What does it cost to keep the place open? 30. Really? Yep. So you're losing $200,000 a year? It's been a nightmare. We maintained our room rates, thinking that the economy wouldn't be this long a haul. But we've all experienced those kind of difficulties, and myself included, but you, you navigate your way out of that recession. Unfortunately, my partner lost his job. We expected him to have his job for a little longer. He must have gained a substantial payoff or retirement. It's all been put into this. How much? Over a million dollars. A million dollars? Into this already? Yes. And does he have an active role in the business? He tries to maintain the accounting, mm -hmm. and he helps just about with everything. Uh, we're in trouble. Trouble? You'd never guess from the look of this place. It's more like Buckingham Palace than Skid Row. Do you know what, um, Robert, honestly, I'd like to go straight to my room, if you would not okay. mind, please. All right. Wow. Uh, this place goes on. It does. It's the largest colonial revival mansion in New England. And more paintings. Wow. And you're in the Maxwell Everett Suite, which is the original. Um, OK. Wow, beautiful room. And, uh, uh, I mean, this is, uh, this is a beautiful room, but what is that smell? I mean, seriously. It, it does smell. Yeah, but it smells like shit. I mean, that is horrific. Oh, my god. It smells like sewage. Coming up, Robert's staff turn on him. I'm supposed to tell you the truth, right? The truth is all I want to know. I'm telling you exactly how I feel and how the people that I work with feel. The entire staff is ready to walk out. You can talk to him. He's your fucking chef. I'm beyond angry. I'm beyond pissed off. And I have to step in. How dare you? You still haven't got it. Get your head out of your ass and start getting a little fucking real. Excuse me. Go on, then, you pompous fuck. I'm at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and I've just met its owner, Robert Dean II, who's filled his hotel with expensive art and antiques. Were you born with this in your mouth? But he can't fill his rooms, and his business is struggling. You're losing $200,000 a year. It's been a nightmare. And no wonder, because although the room he's put me in looks nice... Beautiful room. ...it has one major drawback. What is that smell? It smells like raw sewage. We had a plumbing issue, and It's like someone's it's... shot under the bed and... Um... How much? This room goes for $350 a night. $350 a night for a room that smells of shit? Well... You're kidding me. We haven't rented it, though. Bloody hell. It's been out of use for, um, four months. Four months? Yeah. Oh, come on. It has been. This is crazy. It is crazy. It doesn't make sense. I've got to get out of here. It stinks of shit. Is there another room, Yes, please? I have room, too. Bloody yeah. hell. I didn't realize... $350 to be caked in shit? Wow, it's gorgeous. And this one doesn't smell like crap. I'm going to quickly um, unpack, and then I would um, I would like to have a um, a quick bite of lunch. OK, I'll, yeah? tell, I'll notify the chef. What channel. time does the restaurant close for lunch? I know well, we actually don't serve lunch normally, but we're happy to prepare you something. <laughs> Is that a joke? We, we serve breakfast no, no, and dinner. Stop, 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 stop. You don't actually serve lunch. 
now. The restaurant's closed for lunch? Yes. If someone requests lunch, we'll make lunch for them, but... Could you uh, prepare lunch for me? Uh, yes, I can. I'll tell the chef. Please. OK. Uh, thank you. Yes. Not open for lunch. Gordon is going to want lunch. Huh? Gordon wants lunch. What am I supposed to do with that information? Hmm. That was a welcome breath of fresh air on the back of that disgusting smell of crap in that room. I can't believe it. And the rooms are gorgeous, and yet how could you have a room that has been smelling for months that bad, and then he sticks me in it? What a muppet. Despite the hideous smell in that first guest room, I've still worked up quite an appetite. Hello. Hi, how are you? Barbara. Barbara, how glamorous are you? I'm nice to see you. Likewise. I have a mad crush on Gordon, as he knows I'm a cougar. <laughs> how old are you now? I, oh, don't You're say. not old. Last week I turned 70. You're kidding me. You look you a million dollars. You have made my year. 70. Watch out, Joan <laughs> Collins, I'm telling you now. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Barbara, what's wrong with this place? Well. In a nutshell. Don't get any people. Mm -hmm like pulling teeth to get my paycheck. You don't get paid? It takes forever to get my paycheck, and when I do, it's usually something's left out. But hold on a minute, you, you don't get paid, and when you do... Not, at, not on time, we're supposed to get paid every two weeks. So what do you earn a fortnight? I made 6000 this year. $6,000 a year? That's ridiculous. You know, you gotta have the money flowing, and it's almost come to a standstill at this point. My last paycheck was $48. Unbelievable. Rob has obviously got enough money to fill the guest rooms with fine art and antique furniture. But he doesn't pay his staff. And um, I'm starving. What would you recommend? The crab cakes with a little salad. So this is the dinner menu. OK, because we're not open for lunch. Right. And the lamb sounds great as well. You want the lamb? Yeah. All right. Darling, is this a uh, prefix menu? Or... Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's no prices on here. What sort of restaurant doesn't have prices on the menu? It's like a club for millionaires where, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. I've got a supplement of $15 from the lamb. It's How enough, much is... Enough charge for the lamb. Is Robert nearby? How much is it for three courses? $59. $59. So if we had the lamb... It would be... 74 People are horrified at the price of the food. This is why a lot of people think that Juniper Hill is snobbish. When we typically take a reservation, we will tell people it's a three-course meal. But that's for the residents. I'm talking about a local coming in here. We're reservation only, though, so nobody walks in. We don't what? have walk-in. How can you expect to appeal to the locals? Um, we haven't identified the appropriate people to come here, or... Hold on a minute. What do you mean, appropriate people? Hold on. People who can afford $59 for three courses. Appropriate people? What a snob. Where does he think he is? The Ritz? And where's your and... table? Which one's your table? Uh, well, most of the time I eat in our RV, our motor coach. Say that again? Oh, we have a motor coach to the side. Price, and where'd it come from? Is it yours? You rent it? Uh, yeah, it's ours. We, I mean, we owe on it, but we bought it. and We bought, bought it? Yeah. And how much was that? Over $100,000. $100,000? You're three years away from 50. You should not be living in an RV. We don't live in uh, an RV. Um, it is a motor coach, which is the higher-end version of an RV. It is that psychological break for us, and it gives me a place to relax and kind of unwind. I actually love it. I could live there the rest of my life, to be honest with you. It's quiet, it's clean. I suppose if this place doesn't get fixed, then you might be in there full-time, yeah. I've just sat down for lunch at the Juniper Hill Inn. Hello. And already I've found out the staff aren't paid on time. Like pulling teeth to get my page. And the owners live in a camper outside. How much was that? Uh, over $100,000. This place is baffling. I hope the food makes more sense. Excellent. <laughs> wow. Where are the crab cakes? Oh, that's in there, underneath there. Are they mini crab cakes? Are we, uh... The chef has decided that those are the size that he needs to serve. Mm-hmm. I mean, that tastes dreadful. That thing tastes sort of washy and soapy. And $20 for that? He's as cheap with his crab cakes as he is with his staff. Wow. Now for the lamb, with Robert's ridiculous $15 extra charge. It's um, a rack really of lamb mackerel. encrusted in macadamia nuts, uh, fresh herbs, and a little bit of Dijon mustard. It's served with a honey vinegar reduction. It's not even cooked properly. Rest it and take that off. 
I always get nervous when you see white fat like that on the side of the chop. Is it to your liking? I mean, it's pretty raw in the center. You like the flavor of it, though, the honey curry? No, way too no. sweet. I, I'm, I'm not satisfied with uh, the quality of the foods coming out of the kitchen. I believe our chef has a learning curve to be well, where he needs to be. Thank you. <laughs> we just lost our other chef. Why? Why did the chef leave? I'm supposed to tell you the truth, right? The truth is all I want to know. Why did the chef leave? Well, her paycheck. Mm. She put all her, everything on her uh, charge cards, and, and she just figured she wasn't paid back for what she... The chef bought produce. She did, she did everything. She was the best chef ever. Barbara, that's dreadful. I'm starving. Um, the peanut butter chocolate decadence, uh, I could do with some of that. Pick me up, please. Thank you. God. A chef that left because she had to buy produce on her own credit card. I mean, this guy's priorities are upside down. A bit like this inn. OK, are you ready? This, he said, he doesn't care for the sweetness, there's fat around it. He didn't care for the flavor of the honey gar. Wow. Thank you very much. Uh, did you cut it in half? Because it looks like someone's taken it. And where's the other half gone? Uh, it goes to the another person who orders. Oh, no, I want my other half. $74. This place is insane. Listen, half my dessert's missing. If you think I'm spending $74 for a dessert that is half cocked. Mm. It's actually quite nice. There is hope. I'm sorry. You like I'm, I'm going to say that that is not a dessert that he made. Barbara made it. No. Nope. Somebody else makes desserts. It's ordered. Like store bought? Like through one of our purveyors. What? Where's the chef? He's in the kitchen. Can you get him out, please? Yes. What? How you doing, chef? Julian, in my opinion, is not living up to his potential as a chef. He will try to cut corners, and I think Gordon needs to know these things. I've just spent $74 for three plates of absolute dire, dated shit food. Crab cakes? Yes, sir. You can't put two little half testicle-sized fucking crab cakes that came from a can. There's bigger fucking cakes, chef, at a fucking canopy party. My lamb was cold in the middle, the fat was white, it was almost like a mouthful of sugar. The best tasting dish for me was the fucking chocolate peanut thing that I got served half a portion that's not even made fucking in-house. What is this? There's no synergy here. There is honestly a lack of communication often. Sometimes when I'm in the middle of doing breakfast service for the 10 people that we randomly get, I get five texts from him asking me a question. So why are you texting him? If you have a question, I'd you like should you maybe show me leave the RV and come out show, and talk to show us. Show me those texts. Are you nitpicking? Are you trying to control him? Are you... No, I'm trying to make sure I, I'm, I haven't been sleeping very well, to be honest with you, and uh, I've, had, I've been beaten down. I'll take responsibility for everything that happens in the kitchen. You don't own the place. You own it, yet he's acting more responsible. What do you own a week, if you don't mind me asking? $1,000? Before taxes, $400. Jesus Christ almighty. $400 a week to be the head chef in a luxury hotel. That's insane. I mean, you're barely surviving. I'm, I'm, I don't know that I'm even barely surviving. If you're not happy with your work environment, you should leave. Are you taking the piss or is this just an abuse for you? What are you doing to these people? This is their livelihoods. This is your responsibility. Rob's world. And you're in an RV, a hundred grand. Everybody is disgusted that you live in that thing. They really are. Because it costs so much money and they can't get their paycheck on time. Well, that is not the that is that not is the part case. of the issue. But we are was... surrounded by wealth and reminded of poverty at the same time because of that RV. Well, it's a symbol. To me, that RV is a symbol. And it's a symbol that you're separating yourself from everybody else. I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. I'm telling you exactly how I feel and how me, the people that I work I with feel. feel. Let me tell you how I feel. Tell when me. you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the goddamn internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu and get a menu, how long did I ask for you to make a menu of your own? And if I'm on the computer, usually as I'm trying to research menus, oh, research please. ingredients. Give me a break. 
I've given you plenty of breaks. I work very long days, yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. There's only been one paycheck that I got on time. Almost the entire staff is ready to walk out because they are tired of not getting paid. Anything to say? No, we, we do things. Oh, please. It's my first day at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and the battle between the chef and the owner... I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. ...has turned what should be a charming country inn into a war zone. I'm telling you exactly how I feel. I work very long days, yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. There's only been one paycheck that I got on time. Almost the entire staff is ready to walk out because they are tired of not getting paid. Anything to say? No. We're tired, and half the team is broke. I'm beyond angry. I'm beyond pissed off. Well, I just got a new asshole ripped to me. Gordon says that I live in a fantasy world and that uh, I live in a million dollar RV while our, our, our employees can't pay their bills and all of this kind of stuff because we don't pay them on time. And they're all complaining that they haven't gotten their paychecks this time either. Oh, they haven't. And he said that everything is all about me. I can't believe what a mess this place is. I've got to get off this hill for a bit. There's someone I need to see. Hello, is that Lida? It's Gordon Ramsay. I've got some questions about Robert and Juniper Hill. Would you mind if I pop over for five minutes, please? Great. I'll see you then. Thanks, Lida. I think the old chef that quit will be able to give me some insight into what's wrong with Juniper Hill. Good to see you. Good to see you. Come on in. Give me a little insight to what it was like actually working there. I have to say it was a very interesting five years. Uh, things were going very, very well. And then all of a sudden, two years into it, they stopped answering the phone. Hmm. Robert, I think, thought he was too important to answer the phone or he was too busy doing other things. So preoccupied and distracted. Very, in way that... very preoccupied and distracted and not focused at all on maintaining his own business. Wow. I was getting cut out of a living when they did all this stuff. I used to earn forty, fifty thousand dollars in one restaurant, and now I'm down to earning uh, fifteen. Were you paid on time? Um, not very often. Wow. Um, did you ever use your own money to buy things? All the time. And then I would have to demand to be paid back, or we weren't going to open for dinner. It's insane. Barbara's been shorted checks a lot. She's barely earning hundred dollars a week. Can yeah, you? and he won't pay. Her. And then if he had a private party with all his friends, he didn't tip them. You're kidding me. No. That's just disgusting. I mean, I, that's where I, I draw that. You can't do that. No. You just can't treat people like that. Now, no. he's a confirmed snob, and he thinks he's above yeah. the town. He thinks he's untouchable. I'm here to make this place work. Um, yeah. The first thing I'm going to do is burst his bubble. I'd like to be a fly on that wall, but... Would, would, <laughs> would you come back and walk through the doors to have a look at it at the end of the week and just come back for dinner? No. No, just won't go or... No, I'm not even interested in getting in. I, I just fear getting in one more battle with Ari or Robert. And, what a shame, um, after five years. Yeah. Do you think I've got a chance of saving it? The problem he has now is nobody will work there. You know, I'm there to get this place turned around. Uh -huh. um, those staff deserve a better future. They do. You know, I, I feel terrible for them. Um, listen, thank you. You're very welcome. Um, appreciate your time. Enjoyed it. Thanks, Lida. Likewise. Nice to meet you. Good to see you too. Bye bye. Bye bye. How sad is that after five years of her life dedicated to the Juniper Hill? You know, she won't even step foot in the door, she doesn't want to even see them. The old chef left because she couldn't stand it, and the current chef looks like he's ready to walk too. I wonder if everyone here is feeling the same frustration. Jennifer, what you, what's wrong with the place? What's wrong with the place? We're lacking uh, paychecks on time. Paycheck? You don't get paid on time either? No. We're missing basic supplies too. Basic supplies? We don't even have, I mean, Noel purchased guest checks for us today so that uh, we've been using scrap pieces of paper. First name is? I'm Ryan Keith. Ryan Keith. So what'd you do? I'm the estate manager here. I do all the maintenance on the house. I've done everything here, though. That's why he likes me to spread out my talents to mm -hmm. try and help anybody wherever they need help. How's morale? Not good. <laughs> I personally haven't been paid since the 6th of January. Here it is the 1st of February. That's nearly a month, and 
You pay the employees before paying your bills when they've done the work. That's their livelihood. I'm amazed you're still here, working as hard as you are. Because staff never need to be treated like this, let me tell you. It's always as if what you're saying to him doesn't get through because he sees you as not an equal. He treats me like that, and that really bothers me because I feel like I've contributed a lot. It's actually pretty degrading. This is insane. Coming up, oh my god. I uncover the shocking extent of Robert's reckless spending. Thousands of dollars worth. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Robert's dreadful communication skills cause a meltdown. I said, where does this chicken go? Ask him again! Tempest flare. Excuse me. One. I am the boss. And Robert reveals his true colors. How dare you! I'm shocked with what I'm finding at the Juniper Hill Inn. Owner Robert wants to kill his chef. How long did I ask for you to make a menu of your own? And the rest of the staff want to kill Robert. How's morale? Not good. Estate manager Ryan has told me about some of the problems, but I now he wants to show me. If you want to see the root of the problem, let's go to the basement. <laughs> to the basement? Yes, please. Jesus, what's in there? Everything. Oh, really? It's the majority of it is personal items. Not even the shelves are all lined. Bloody hell. Look at this place. Oh, my God! Look at this stuff. Stereos, wine racks, quilts, chairs, tables, copper pans, more chairs over there. Look at these. Robert prides himself on having to have the very best of everything. Christ, there's enough in here to open three restaurants. Is all this stuff still brand new? Most of it is brand new. Littered with thousands of dollars. Robert's got so much stuff, he could furnish a dozen houses. But he doesn't pay his staff. It's crazy. Where are we going? Brace yourself. We're going up to the office. You're kidding me. Oh, no. Please come come on. in. This is the office? This is the office. You're kidding me. Not at all. I wanted you to see. Jesus Christ. It scares me half to death. Oh, my God. This is insane. It would only take a day or two to sort out this hoarder's heaven. But Robert's left it in chaos. No wonder he spends all day hiding in his RV. This guy has lost the plot. This is disturbing. Please tell me there's no more. Yes, there's more. This is where the pigs are kept. <laughs> At least they look happy. Hey. Pigs who live a life of luxury while everyone around them suffers. Sounds strangely familiar. Bloody hell. So the owners live out, the pigs live in. There's more. So check out the storage units. Storage units? You are kidding me. No. Oh, my god. This one's all personal items. Look at oh, this. Jesus. I mean, I swear to God, it's like a special edition of Hoarders. I mean, honestly. Wow. I'm in shock. You know that. And this one? All of this entire storage unit is full of chairs. Oh, my God. Look at this stuff. Honestly. I mean, they must be packed with thousands of dollars worth of Hundreds of thousands of dollars. How much stuff does one need? Bloody hell. I can't believe how much stuff Robert has bought. He must have spent a fortune. I've got to meet Robert's partner, Ari, and find out why he's financing all this. Welcome, welcome. welcome. My name's Ari. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Please. Um, my God. So, how much money have you put into this business personally? More or less uh, over a million dollars. A million dollars? And how much have you seen back? Nothing. Hmm. It was all my, my uh, severance packages, my income that I when I was working, and then my retirement plans. Robert's savings are in artwork uh, and antiques. I have supporting this in with my, my savings. Clearly, this is a beautiful place. But putting your entire life savings into a sinking ship is insane. And with Robert at the helm treating his staff so poorly, I don't see things getting any better. Robert is in a fantasy world, and I've been struggling all day to get through to him. This place, it's dreamland, a playground for your boyfriend, Robert. Your biggest problem mm -hmm. is not Juniper Hill. Your biggest problem is fucking Robert. I'm at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn and I've just had a difficult conversation with Robert's partner, Ari, who seems strangely unconcerned about how bad things really are here. How much money have you put into this business personally? More or less uh, over a million dollars. A million dollars? And how much have you seen back? Nothing. Hmm. But I've tried to make him see who's to blame for the problems. Your biggest problem is fucking Robert. 
Dinner time is approaching. Word has spread about me being at the inn, and the place is bustling. Good to see you. Hello Hi. there. Hey. <laughs> nice to see yeah. you. I'm learning a lot about why the inn is struggling by watching Robert and Ari deal with the new influx of guests. Anyone with any restaurant experience would stagger the seating of guests. But as if they're just welcoming people to a dinner party at a Hello. private house. Hello there. How are you? Robert and Ari see everyone at once. There in the corner. Make pretend you're back in 1902. It's a, meant to be a relaxed evening. And... Order in. And that's a recipe for disaster for Chef Julian and the wait staff. Chef, I'm making a change on 21. Write it down. Don't tell me. Just write it down. It's an order. Are you guys kidding me with all these orders? Who said everybody at once like this? Do we don't know about pacing? Who's <laughs> 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 Who's writing the tickets? Do you mean, I mean, table four, table five? Some of them have names on them, some of them do not. Who wrote that ticket? There's not even a table number on there. Table four. They just got their lobster. Where's table 23? They've got. I need one person at a time. Table I need less talking in the kitchen, please. Table 23 has got Every time no I food. I'm to put something up the window. Eight people ask me for something. With Julian having been slammed by the owner's dreadful seating, Ari isn't helping the strained yes. atmosphere with an awkward art lesson. But then, like, this, this is from 1800, and it was painted for an uh, opera house, because you know what it is. Come on. Everybody has to know what that is. It's a handball going across oh, yeah. the Alps with the white elephants. Oh. Everybody should know that. <laughs> <laughs> On the other side of the house, Robert's also busy giving a lecture. This is one of the original signs to the house. There's a lot of history here. Um, Teddy Roosevelt actually was best friends with the man, or a very good friend with the man who actually built the house, Maxwell Evart. Did you always get this back to? I mean, Yes. Yeah? When I have four seating, Robert has groups of his friends come in, sitting at once. OK, <laughs> so you're waiting for your starters then? Yes. OK, yep. well, l let me uh, check on those for you. OK, and see how thank it's you. OK, yeah. Robert. Yes. This ticket system is bollocks, you know that? Handwritten tickets, no time on there, no proper dates, no coordination. Who trains the front of house team? Who's in charge of the restaurant? Who, who is that? Uh, I would be the host, and then... you will be the host? Yes, the chef takes over the kitchen. This place is such a mess. Clearly, Robert has no idea how to run a hotel. Yeah, uh, I've got a I lost, uh, so, Me too. Yeah, go I'm on, trying to matter? straighten out the damn drinks, because they lose. we lost 30-something drinks. Oh, my God. Robert, we lost 30 drinks. At least. I often find drinks not written down or... Just a, a lack of follow through. And it's a big problem when we're trying to make money. There's no communication between the bar and the dining room. So people get served drinks, but no one remembers the charge for them. But we're losing big money. No kidding, and they're losing their checks, and I'm going crazy trying to figure out a system. They have hardly any guests and don't charge the ones they do have. No wonder this place is in the red. How does that happen? They're supposed to write the drinks down and then apply them to a table and a room, and then they go into the computer. The ticket system is bogus. And as I feared, seating everyone at once is already causing problems for the staff and the guests. It's not very warm. It's burnt. With guests now suffering and the kitchen falling apart from Robert's ill-managed seating, come on, I have to step in. Um, just, to, just stop there. You have to be fucking kidding me. This goose liver is burnt to a cinder. Stop, Julian. Yes, sir. Come around, buddy. I know we're in the shit and we're busy. Food's dying in the window. A foie gras salad. I mean, honestly, it's like a piece of fucking beef jerky. Where's Ari? Get me Ari, urgently. I mean, honestly, come on, guys. Hello. I stopped that. I just said what no. That? What is that? What is that? Foie gras. Well, that's foie gras. Mm. That is not foie gras. It's, it's not funny, guys. No, that is not funny. I mean, I know we're in the ship, but does anyone have any standards here? Yes. Well, can I see them? Yes. Can I see something to hold on to? Because right now, I just want to get out of here. I can only be as good as I am with the tools that I have. I'm embarrassed, and I know that I can do better. I know the staff can do better. First off, no more fucking tickets in the kitchen. Give him 10 minutes to catch up, OK? All right. And Robert, is it possible for the first time, put the phone away, get your jacket off, and fucking dig deep a little bit, yeah? Please? Yeah? Somebody? I'm concerned that food is in the window, and it's just dying. Long trays on table six are in the window. 
Entree, send them. They should be sat here. I'm, I... How am I supposed to do everything back are you, here? Are, are you with me? I'm with are you. Are you an owner? I'm with you. Are you an entrepreneur? I keep trying to, you know. You can why talk is to him. He's your fucking chef. Well, when I try to communicate, he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I can't do it. No, he doesn't. I fucking do find it. your balls and tell him you need to talk to him. I found my balls. Do I want him to walk out? Well, he's not going to walk out if you communicate with him. Talk to him then. Well, I have been trying to. So when he finishes it. Send the fucking food. There's always a third dish not ready or a fourth dish. Well, it not must ready. be one or two minutes behind, but unless you fucking ask, how are you supposed to fucking know? I have been asking. I said, where's this chicken? So ask food? him again! It's the middle of dinner service at Juniper Hill Inn, and Chef Julian is drowning under a flood of orders. How am I supposed to do everything back here? Owner Robert has finally decided to get his hands dirty to try and help, but he's utterly incapable of communicating with his chef. When he finishes it, send the fucking food. There's always a third dish not ready or a fourth dish. Well, it must ready. be one or two minutes behind, but unless you fucking ask, how are you supposed to fucking know? Where is the soup go, Jillian? Table 23. Okay. I just told you one minute ago. I need foie gras. Where I know, I have it right behind me. I All right, well, you see how. Okay. Julian. Yes. That's what you call communication. It's better communication. That's yes. what you call communication, Robert. There's a difference between interrupting and no communication. And when you fucking put those entrees up there, you make sure they go. You've got to start stepping up and fucking dictating a little bit, because this is just madness. I agree. Jesus Christ. It was fuck ups from start to finish, and it was a clusterfuck, and Gordon saw that. Dreadful. With an owner and chef so incapable of communicating with each other, it's no surprise the diners are unhappy, and they're not the only ones. While Robert and Ari are living the dream, their staff are living a nightmare. Hopefully, by gathering everyone in one room, okay. I can get to the root of the problem. I've never seen a hotel and inn in such disarray. There needs to be structure, and there isn't structure. It's just like a scramble. It's a mess. There was no order in the kitchen. Nobody took responsibility for any one thing. No one has been taught any standards in any department. Really, it's like I'm, I'm racing from thing to thing. Nobody knows what the other ones do it. There's nobody here that is in control, willing to take charge. I did 40 fucking dinners by myself tonight. I could help you, and you've Excuse never me. asked. Oh, yeah. I can cook the rack of lamb. Excuse me. Bragging about Excuse making me. one plate is nothing to brag about. Excuse me. Excuse me. I am the boss. You can't call yourself the boss if you don't fucking pay them. I mean, honestly, do you think that's normal, Ari? Do you think that's the way to look after your team? Every pay period, there is a problem with the checks. Every pay period, there's and a problem it, with the checks. And a lot of I don't know what the problem is, but I know it's the same two people And do you get it. to know about it first, or do you have to go ask him for your salary? I always ask for it. That's absolutely wrong. And the reason is... He's lying. I'm... No, 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 he's not lying. I would rather have them wait than write a check that's going to bounce. What? Because I don't... How about telling him it's not going to be ready, rather than having to ask, like some skivvy? Cap in hand, please, sir. May I get paid? Anybody else have to wait? Yes. Mm -hmm. How long? Five days more. I have to Barbara? I, I had to wait five weeks. You had to what? I had to wait five weeks before I got a paycheck. Five weeks? Mm -hmm. Guys, you come in and you work your ass off. The least these two guys can do is pay your fucking salary on time. I don't have a secretary, Gordon. I'm sorry. I'm trying to communicate with brides. I'm trying to send out things. I have to have peaceful time in order to do my work. Are you always this pathetic? I am not pathetic. Well, when are you going to stand up and start showing some respect for your team and start growing a pair to sort of understand the mess you're in? I understand the mess we're in. Right. I'm fighting for the team. You dug the fucking hole. Yes, we and did. And put them in it. So they're fucked. They don't have to work here. Oh, my God. I mean, God. you know, the bottom line is... Oh, how dare you? No, they but don't have to work paycheck. here. How dare you? How fucking dare you? They don't have to work here. Oh, my God. I... 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 You can't, disrespectful, can't. disgusting man. They don't have to work here. I don't think you realise how fucking lucky you are. Because if it wasn't for one, two, three, four, five, six of them, You'd be driving that RV miles away from here. Robert definitely needs a reality check. It's life or death right now. And I don't think he actually realizes what kind of jeopardy this place is in. It's not all about you, Robert. Robert's world, Robert's bubble, Robert's dream. You're not the Lord of the Manor, and you're not the Great Gatsby. You're, 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 you're Robert. 
There's only me in here. Excuse thinks... me, excuse me. Go Why? on then, you pompous fuck. Excuse me. Don't talk to me like well, that. Well, what's wrong with it? I want to know what's Don't wrong with it. Don't speak to me like that. Well, I'm that. telling you, you get your head me. out of your ass and start getting a little fucking real. You still haven't got it that this place is sinking. Start paying a little bit more attention to the guys on the ground. Understand how hard it is out there. Forget your fucking antique roadshow and start from the bottom running this business. You're right, there's no structure. It's fragmented. The team needs a leader. They need a structure. They need a mentor. They need some support. And all they get is nitpicks. What kind of motivation is that? All I've heard since I've been here is that you're just blaming people. Well, I'm blaming you for not taking charge. Get fucking real. Tonight on Hotel Hell, a near-fatal accident has left Mississippi hotel owners in a desperate situation. I broke both of my ankles and my back in two places. The business is failing, and with not enough money coming in, this married couple have lost their home. You live in here? Yes. There's not even a window. You have to do what you have to do. If I don't do something soon, they will lose everything. We have two children. I would like for them not to have to worry about their mom and dad. You've let this business swallow the both of you up. I think you deserve something better. I only hope I'm not too late. Hotel Chester is located in Starkville, Mississippi, home to the Mississippi State University. Husband and wife, David and Suki Mollendor, bought the hotel in 2000. Before buying the Chester, David traveled the world as a hotel troubleshooter. Well, I've worked in the hotel industry 39 years. Thank you for calling Hotel Chester. Wanted to try and settle down and give our kids one stable place to be. Oh. One of us got to get taller. <laughs> to begin with, a 36-bedroom hotel was a real success, packed with students and locals. How are you doing? Good. <laughs> <laughs> then a sudden tragedy hit the family. David was coming home and was uh, involved in a, a major auto accident. We thought we lost him. That changed all of us it's overnight. He crushed his feet and was bedridden for almost six months. It's a little dated. The court is very dated. In David's absence, standards dropped and customers stopped coming. Well, we were losing so much money that I had to file for bankruptcy. The financial losses have been so bad, the bank foreclosed on their home. So now they're living in the hotel. Living in the hotel, working together in the hotel. I feel tired and I feel uh, out of sync with the world. They couldn't afford payroll, so Suki left her job in real estate and took over as chef and temporary manager. It was my idea that we open a sushi restaurant. Never worked in any restaurant kitchens before in my entire life. But I knew how to make the sushi. My mouth's confused. But despite her best intentions, with no formal training, oh. she's struggling. Oh. Uh -oh. My knife. Suki spends all her time in the hotel, so she's blind to the tens of thousands of students and tourists who could be potential customers. And the hotel's bedrooms and dining room are empty most nights. I just need those entrees. Yeah, but I guess they're coming. You know, I see it in my parents' eyes. I see that they're physically exhausted, that they're mentally drained. My mom, she used to be lively, vibrant. She's honestly half the woman she used to be. Man, I forget. I'm losing my mind. When I came to this place, I was 180 pounds of twisted blue steel, sex appeal, and mucho hell. Then this old bitch has worn me down to 200 pounds of flab, gab, and total no mas. With almost no money coming into the hotel, David and Suki are hanging on by a very thin thread. 
I need Gordon to help my parents because if this hotel doesn't change, it's we lose everything. This is it. I'm in Starkville, Mississippi's college town. I'm on my way to the Hotel Chester. Mississippi State University, founded in 1878. Any hotel with a college on their doorstep should be absolutely thriving, not just for the students, but with their parents as well. I can't wait to check into the Hotel Chester. Where is this place? I can't even see the sign. Okay, I'm pulling over here. Got to know where it is. How are you? I'm looking for the Hotel Chester. I've never been there before. You've yeah, never been there? It's one no, I'm down. fine. Yeah. I've gone round three times. It's easy to miss. <laughs> easy to miss. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't see any signs. Well, there may be one sign, but I mean, it's not, right. it's not too big. Man. OK, great. <laughs> Bring on the line, so. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy. The students never go to the Chester, despite the fact it's right next to the campus. Weird. There we are, there. Historic Hotel Chester entrance. Well. Such a huge building and such a tiny sign. It's madness. Finally. Morning, sir. Hey, good how are morning. You? How are you? Good to see you, Gordon. Good to see you, and I'm David Gordon. David, nice to see you. Well, I finally found the place. That is so confusing there, you know that. There's no sign on Main Street. I drove straight by. And see him on the corner of the building? A tiny sign saying it's historic. That, that's what's historic about oh, it. That's, it's, that's, that's, historically been a bad entrance. Now we have you in an executive king room. And then here's two keys for you, because I'm giving you two because men don't follow instructions as well as women. Okay. Or in case you get lucky, hell yes. <laughs> so you're a hands-on owner. Uh, you run the desk all by yourself? My wife is the chef. She's taught herself. You can meet lady? Well, can I finish my spiel? <laughs> I thought we'd already finished. So, uh, breakfast is included. We do have fresh cut fruit. That's nice to know, fresh cut fruit. We, what uh, would be the alternative? Canned? No. Uh, no fruit, I think. Oh. <laughs> I love your sense of humor. <laughs> it's dry and very funny. Fresh cut fruit for breakfast. Yes, sir. Nice. Now, I just want you to know I'm not always at the desk. OK. But you'll be able to recognize me even if I'm walking away from you, because I'm the one who looks like he's riding a chicken. Riding a chicken? Yeah. I've never ridden a chicken. You have to show me. Oh. Well, you just have to look at my legs. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go get Suki, OK? OK, great. That poor chicken. OK, now. I've got a guest that wants to meet you. Oh, okay. uh oh what do you do with that? I am making tamago. Gordon is here to help us out. And I'm terrified, but at the same time, I, I'm so excited. OK. Oh! Hi! Hello. How are you? Nice to see you. And don't worry, I've had worse than wet hands. Nice to meet you. I washed my hands. Uh, that's very kind. Thank you for that. Uh uh, and Thank you. Suki, right? Nice to meet you. Likewise, good to see you too. <laughs> What's it like working with your wife? I love my wife, so it's mm -hmm. nice to be around her until she gets her nose out of joint. She has a chef's temperament. If okay. you're not familiar with it, right, they, well. they can fly off the handle pretty easy. What's your background? I'm a hotel guy. I was in Vietnam and I went to so hotel, hotel school. So you qualified uh, as a hotelier? Well, so, in my view, yeah. Well, that's great. That's good, good to hear. Graduated with a major in hotel and restaurant management and have been in the business almost 40 years. So, in a nutshell, what's wrong with the hotel? That's a question. We're not sure. We don't think it's a quality issue, uh, neither for our rooms or our food and, and beverage. Why don't you both show me to the room? OK. I've been a general manager of a lot of hotels. I eventually became a turnaround guy to take on problem properties. So my big surprise here is that I'm having a hell of a time trying to turn this thing around. We just call it an executive okay. king. Oh, dear. OK. This is it? Yes, sir. What is that, suede? It's uh, leather, but it's a uh, rough leather and very difficult to clean. And it's so bland to I me. Mean, it's like a cheap motel chain. I feel like I'm in the witness protection program. This is depressing here. So when was the last time the roof were touched? 
2003. 2003, so 10 years ago. Yeah. It feels like something out of the 1970s. Our hotel rooms are dated, you know, we try to call it period furniture. Yeah, I don't know what to say. It always tells you that a place is on the decline when you walk in, you've got walls that are a mess, scuffs everywhere, and big marks on the sofas that you're expected to pay good money to sit down in. So far, I'm not digging it. I'm going to unpack, and then like to come down and um, have a bite to eat. Suki, so what's your experience in the kitchen? My father had a sushi restaurant in Washington, D.C. Parents of a Japanese yes. restaurant? Had. My did you father passed kitchen? away. Of course. But did you work in the kitchen? No, just washing dishes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, I'm going to unpack. Thank you. OK, hey. Yeah. Thank Good thank to you. see you, yes, likewise. Sir. And nice I'm going to pop down and have a bite to eat. OK? okay. Right, thank you. So, you know, I feel like the guy who walked into a bar with a big frog on his head, went up to the bar and asked the bartender for a drink. And the bartender said, man, I tell you, you got a problem, don't you? And the frog said, yeah, I'll I sure later, do. Babe. Can you cut this ward off my ass? <laughs> and God, can that man talk. Bars and restaurants in a vibrant college town like this are always packed at lunchtime. But this place is dead. I'm Lindsay. How are you? Good. There you go. Let me get you something to drink. Do you have some ice cold water? OK. Please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, my darling. Um, what would you recommend? Strawberry field sushi is uh, very popular. It's a little bit sweeter. I'll try it. Las Vegas as an appetizer as well. And then, oh, the Sakura. Five individual rolls rolled into one. I don't know how you execute all that Japanese food on that menu when you're not trained. It doesn't quite make sense. Oh, my goodness. This is not good. There's not a lot of people in Starkville that like our sushi. It's a little bit different from what other places in Starkville have. Oh. God, that's slow. Suki runs her kitchen the way she wants to. It always takes too long in between tickets, but there was really nothing I could do about it. This food is taking way too long. I've been waiting over an hour for raw fish. Oh, my God. I can't take this anymore. Oh, God. Damn it. I'm at Starkville, Mississippi's Hotel Chester, and I've been waiting for my lunch for a very long time. Damn it. Jeez. <laughs> I nodded off there. My God. Does the sushi usually take this long? Yes, sir. What is this one? Las Vegas. Ooh, oh, my God. Salmon cream, cream cheese and asparagus, and then it's deep fried and uh, comes with a jalapenos. Fried salmon with cream cheese. It's disgusting. What a strange combination. Very weird. It doesn't work for me, that one. I mean, it's just um, greasy. You um, can get this out of the way. Uh, as quick as possible. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. My first impressions of the food here is that it's as bad as the rooms. Sakura. Sakura. And there's cream cheese in the middle. Look at that thing. So it's pretty big, right? So how are you supposed to get it in your mouth? I've never eaten it before. Let's try. Come on. Me? We're in this together. Oh, no, you ordered this one all on your own. That's yours. Are you sure there? Ready? Open wide, please. Wait, there is no way this is going to fit my mouth. Ready? One, two, three. Oh. Uh-uh. I can't do it. Now I know how my granddad feels when he puts his new teeth in. <laughs> Can uh, I throw uh, it away now? <laughs> so you took one little bite? I did. Damn. Disaster. Total disaster. How did it taste, by the way? I'm very good. The Sakura is very chewy. Suki does try her best, but she has no idea what she's doing. What's wrong with the Sakura? Bland, ugly, chewy, strange combination. Chewy. Yep. And impossible to put in your mouth. Let me tell you about my sushi. I'm not a Morimoto or Nobu. 
absolutely not. I'm doing my best and I respect rice. What is this one? Strawberry field. Now look at that. Strawberry on sushi. On behalf of every Japanese chef in America, I'd like to apologize. It's very weird. Which part is so just, you just weird? You, you wouldn't cover white tuna with strawberries and then glaze it. Strawberry fields. I'd rather fucking eat a beetle. It's too sweet. Strawberries don't belong with tuna. I am frustrated that Gordon does not like uh, my sushi. I've tried all I can. How you doing, honey bun? Uh, he doesn't like any. He doesn't like any of it? No. <laughs> so, truthfully, what is wrong with this place? Lack of business. So on an average weekend, how many guests would you do? On a busy weekend, maybe 12 people. Are they in-house guests, hotel Usually. guests? Usually. So virtually nobody from the outside? Correct. Jesus. Anyway, where are the owners? Can you uh, tell me where they are? Sure. Thank you. They've got just 36 bedrooms, yet on a busy night, just 12 guests eat here. With food that bad, I'm not surprised. Congratulations on the longest lunch I've ever had in my entire cooking career. That was 97 minutes. Yeah, and half of it was raw. As a novice cook, why are you making sushi? It's crazy. I'm trying my best to, to at least introduce Mississippi. Let's eat a little bit healthier. There's nothing healthier with my lunch. Maybe a health warning. Surely you should be giving the locals what they want to eat. That's why they come. Well, no, no, talking no, no. to Lindsay, the only customers we get now are the ones staying in the hotel, which is practically no one. The business is on his ass. And how much debt are you in? Over $900,000. $900,000. Right. We are in debt. Please don't say you don't know. So far, Starkville, Mississippi's Hotel Chester has been a massive letdown. Hotel Chester entrance, well. Such a huge building and such a tiny sign. The dated, soulless rooms are awful. It's like a cheap motel chain. Strawberry on sushi. The sushi is the worst I've ever had. Wow. It's hideous. And David, the co-owner, has just admitted to me and to his wife that they're almost a million dollars in debt. $900,000. Right. We are in debt. Please don't say you don't know. I'm deeply sorry, and I'm, I'm sad that you're upset. I'm not upset at you. David should not have been hiding the financial status from me. Finding out she's been kept in the dark has angered Suki. Dave, I, I don't know what we are doing. I do the spending side and you do the paying side. I don't share the finances with Suki. This is getting ridiculous. Because I'm afraid of hurting Suki's feelings. Calm down. No, I'm not going to calm down. While the owners argue, guests who have heard about my visit are arriving at the Chester. For dinner, I'm just going to go to the restaurant, which is just straight shoot right back there, all right? Okay. And tonight, the restaurant and hotel will be full of people for the first time in years. I feel sorry for all of them. How long have you been waiting? I would say at least 45 minutes. 45 minutes. My apologies. How long have you been waiting? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we've been here over in about an hour. An hour. So, I'm sorry. I've never seen anything like this before. It's insane how long these guests are waiting. So what table is this, Suki? <laughs> Oh, pardon me, I'm sorry. No, I just asked what table are you doing? The very first table. The very first table. It's been well over an hour, and Suki is only working on the first table. She's really struggling, and yet Dave is not stepping in to lend a hand. So, you know, over an hour in the service. Would you go in and help her? I would, but, you know, that's just... Not my territory, right. unfortunately. It's like the hotel's falling apart around you. If someone needs you in the kitchen, in the bar, the reception, shouldn't you be multitasking? The uh, kitchen is her territory. Okay. Well, so, I'm just asking, it's your no, hotel. I, I know, and I appreciate that. Yep. If the kitchen's not David's territory, then maybe the rooms are. It's like wow, touch the blinds, so and there's like That's a... dust all over it. Kind of a beat up family. Looks like it came out of someone's house when they died. This is definitely not supposed to <laughs> hang out. It seems to me that David has checked out. I don't understand what's going on here. This is not good. 
Suki okay. is totally out of adept, having only dealt with one of the eight tables waiting for food. Oh no, this is awful. Wow. What's wrong, Danny? They said it wasn't cooked. Yeah, yeah. it's cold. Yeah, it needs more cooking. Mom, what's wrong? It's not cooked. You okay? I don't even want to get her in trouble. Why is she bursting into tears? You okay? I'm fine. What, the, the, help me understand. What's going on? No, I just... The fish is undercooked in the centre. I know, I know. I just, like, don't... Just, don't what? Um... What is it that I'm missing? The point? I don't understand why she's in there, plain head chef. Because we don't have anyone else. I mean, she became chef when my dad was in a car accident in 2008. He was bedridden for about six months, and then mom moved in to run the hotel the next day. My mom became a chef overnight. She came to the hotel, saw where she thought she was needed, and jumped in the kitchen. And ever since, she's been trying to make it work. And so how long has it been functioning like this? I mean, I think it's been in this state for about uh, two or three years. My dad has taken a step back and given up a little bit. Okay, we have to be strong. Get I some am. fresh air. Get your eyes nice and bright. Okay. okay? <laughs> Finally, I get it. The Hotel Chester has been in a tailspin since David's car accident. I wish Suki or David had told me. Wow. The beer garden. Interesting. Suki is just trying to make this work as best she can, but she is failing miserably. And David has hotel knowledge, but since the accident, he has taken a back seat. This whole place feels lost. The owners, the restaurant, the bedrooms, even this garden feels abandoned, just like the dinner guests. The customers are getting so pissed off. I'm gonna have to do something, otherwise this place is gonna go crazy. The Hotel Chester in Starkville, Mississippi is on the brink of financial disaster, and I finally found out why. My dad was in a car accident in 2008. David's car accident sent the hotel into a sharp decline. Oh, no. Suki is drowning in the kitchen, trying to keep the business afloat. How long have you been waiting? I would say at least 45 minutes. Okay. We've been here over in about an hour. While her husband David isn't taking the reins, I can't see the diner starve. So I've dashed over to the local supermarket. The least I can do to help poor Suki is to cook up a few sliders before the customers walk out. Those diners are gonna get any food, trust me. Tonight, it's coming from me. That's ridiculous in there. An hour for appetizers, crazy. So sorry about the delay. There's a little uh, beef slider from the barbecue in the garden. I don't want you guys washing away. Everybody got some food now? Yes. Feel a little bit better? The burgers have brought Suki enough time to get through the rest of dinner service without anyone walking out. After a long three hours, everyone has finally been fed. I'm sure Suki is as relieved as me that dinner service is over. How are you, Suki? Fine, fine. fine? Yes. That was a tough one. It was very tough. Yeah? Yes, sir. Why don't you guys get out of here, you go home, let's hook up first thing tomorrow morning. How far is home away from here? This is our home now, that room. What do you mean, this is your home? We live here. You live on site? Yes. You have an apartment here? No, right in there, there's a the handicap room. That's our, that's our home now. You live in the handicap room? Yes. Can you show me? Since Dave's accident, I gave up everything. We have no money, so we had no choice but to live in this room. You live in here? Yes. There's not even a fucking window. No. Suki, I had no idea things were this bad. Well, you have to do what you have to do. I'm so sorry. Well, you know, sometimes you have the bad times. Could you get David? OK. Please? I don't know what else to do. We have two children. I would like for them to be, um, not to have to worry about their mom and dad. OK. So. You were running this hotel. This was your baby. That's right. David? Yes. And sadly, you got involved in a tragic car accident. Yes. What happened? Yes. I, I broke both of my ankles and yeah. my back in two places. We nearly lost him. I mean, you know, I was pretty busted up, so... I've been spending most of the past five years just recovering. 
Why did you sell your house? We couldn't make the payment, and you foreclosed? Yes. That's terrible. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. And you come home every night now into this bedroom. Uh -huh. This is awful. It is no way to live. I think you deserve something better. I promise I'm going to help you fix this place. OK? Yeah, that's true. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you. Will you get some rest, please? Sometimes I will go seven days without stepping out of the hotel. And it's, uh, it's sad. I can't believe David and Suki have been living like this for years. I've never wanted to help two people so badly. I just hope I'm not too late. Rough night's sleep. Um, I couldn't stop thinking about David and Zuki downstairs where they are almost cooped up in that tiny room with no windows. I mean, my sleep was rough, but Christ, I can imagine going through that for three years like they've been doing. God. <sighs> David and Suki have sunk so far, they have lost sight of the outside world. If they lose this hotel, then they lose everything. Wow. I need to show them the potential of this place before it's too late. It's like a sink. Oh. Come on. This is ridiculous. I can't even get my feet wet. David and Suki need to see how to make the Hotel Chester a success. I've got a plan. You've let this business swallow the both of you up. Yeah. It is like quicksand. You know, you've lost your way. Not only have you lost the connection with each other, but you lost the connection out there. Out there. The town, the students, the community. Both of you, come with me. I've got something to show you that can save the life of your hotel. In the car, please. When was the last time you two went out for lunch? I can't, I can't remember. remember. You've never been out for lunch together? No. No. Wow. I want to show David and Suki a couple of places that are extremely successful because they tap in to what the community wants. Thank you, Dan. Oh, wow. Uh, lunch, are you always this busy? It's usually busier, actually. On an average weekend, uh, for instance, um, in the middle of summer, how many covers do you do? Hundreds and thousands, probably. I mean, it gets so slam-packed. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank, Thank you, sweet. Can you believe a thousand people a day here? Mm. A day. Envious. Good, honest. Mississippian food. I just want 10%. You just want 100 people a day? Yeah. 10%. I did not know that there were that many people eating now. I've got one more place to show David and Suki to really make sure they see there are plenty of businesses doing well in the town. How cool is this place? Oh, this, okay. is, a, this is really popular. You know, since my accident, I really haven't gotten around town much. You know, this business is 100 metres from your front door. Thank you. Now, no, I don't. Please, how many covers are you doing a, a day? How many? What's the numbers? Um, about 200 a day. 200 a day. Customers and uh, weekends generally double that. Mm -hmm. So an average of 200 guests a day, 400 of the weekends, and families as well, uh, early families, evenings. Yes. Yeah. A lot of our business revolves around uh, college students. Thank you. The purpose of this outing is to show you how these businesses are drawing from the university, how they are open to every market, and it does translate to the rooms, you have a potential gold mine sat there. You have the traffic. You've got to tap into the community. That's what you're not doing. I'm, I'm convinced that's correct. I thought we were always welcoming students. Maybe we are wrong. So let's say, uh, yes, def definitely an eye opener. Now that I've shown David and Suki how much potential there is in Starkville, I need them to commit to turning the Hotel Chester around. That was nice. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I did too. To see it that busy for lunch was incredible. Well, the business is uh, booming there, so... David, you need to get your head back in the game. That's right. I got some great ideas, but you two have to be ready for change. Gordon, whatever direction you help us to get on, we're not going to waver off of that. <laughs> When I arrived at Starkville, Mississippi's Hotel Chester, it was invisible on the main street. 
Hotel Chester entrance. Well, such a huge building and such a tiny sign. And failing to appeal to the people who could make it a success, the college students. I'm convinced Suki and David are now ready for change. Whatever direction you help us to get on, we're not going to waver off of that. So now it's time to reveal the new hotel to David and Suki and their team. Oh, my God! Look at that! Ah! Sure as hell don't have to worry about planning it now. Oh, that's wonderful. Come we on. have a sign. Welcome to the new oh, Hotel hi. Chester. You're no longer hidden on the main street. Now, customers, locals, will identify that it is a hotel. Is it big enough for you, David? Yeah, yeah. I think it's really, really that great. There is the biggest marketing tool you'll ever need. I love it. Oh, this is so good. Should we have a look inside? Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what Gordon has done with the inside of the hotel. Are you ready? Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, jump in. Let's go, go in, go in, go in. Oh Please, this is definitely <laughs> lovely. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Yes, I love it. Gone is the drab and the dullness. Now this room has character. Isn't this beautiful? I'm genuinely thrilled. If I could, I'd do a somersault backwards, and then if Gordon had let me, I'd kiss him. And even if he doesn't, I may drag him in and give him a big old kiss right on the damn lips. <laughs> Megan, nice to see you. that you're happy. I'm very happy. Huh? It's more than I can have hoped for, and it seems to be the beginning of the end of our struggle. Do you think the parents of those 20,000 students yes. in the university will want to stay here now? Yes. All right, would you like to see one more room? Yes. 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 Let's go. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Damn, I love this room. Beautiful. I'm in a dream. Wonderful, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, I can't ask more. Suki, this is not a chain hotel. This is your no, hotel. No, that's like right. Said, something that's to be proud of. Oh. That's awesome. I've got something else to show you. This one, you're going to absolutely love. Ready? So excited. I'd like to welcome you all to your stunning beer garden. There we go. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Oh. oh yeah. This is what I call a beer garden. Damn. Oh, yeah. OK. Modern benches. So we have communal benches as well, large parties, uh, families. Additional space up there as well we've taken advantage of. Stunning furniture. That's nice. Beautiful. <laughs> I love it. You go into the gazebo, we have the most amazing local beers. <laughs> Craft beers on tap. Oh, nice. And these stunning craft beers that can rotate oh. local beers to sort of promote stuff locally. That's awesome. The beer garden is awesome. I'm going to christen it myself, and somebody's going to have to carry me out of it before we open the doors to the public. There's one more thing I'd like to show you. Please, come with me. Yes, sir. I love this garden out here. Welcome to the new Hotel Chester's stunning beer gardens food. This hotel is in a vibrant college town in the heart of Mississippi. So I've created a menu that will attract a younger crowd and highlight southern comfort food. Gone is the fusion confusion. <laughs> Suki, I'm sorry. All gone. Good. Southern food fits the location. How can we be in Southville and not have stunning fried green tomatoes? Next to that, we have oyster bacon po' oh boy. Fried crispy oysters, crispy bacon with a stunning spicy remoulade. And Gordon's Burger. He's a Ooh. chef, and he, from time to time, comes up with some stunning recipes for burgers. Uh, this burger <laughs> recipe um, is featured in Planet Hollywood in Vegas, and it is to die for. The new menu complements the state of Mississippi. I think it really suits the beer garden. Wonderful, wonderful idea. Suki, I have something for you that's going to make your life in the kitchen a whole lot easier. Bear with you one second, please. Now, I've got someone I'd like to introduce you to. Um, someone who's very special with two uh, unique assistants. Come through, please. Say hello to Enrica Williams. Now, she'll be Hotel Chester's new head chef. This lady is a very experienced chef, and she absolutely knows her stuff. I'm covering Enrica's salary. I'm taking care of that until this place picks up and you can afford to keep it yourself. You okay, sir? Uh, <laughs> having Suki in the kitchen kind of broke my heart every day, so I'm really looking forward to getting to know the chef and her apprentices and 
giving them all the support I possibly can. Suki, I want you to keep cooking, but I want you to have a bit of fun with it. And here's how it's going to work. Suki's Rabata Grill. Skewers, chicken, beef, shrimp, yeah. with garlic, yeah. ginger, soy, marinade. That's a Rabata. It's a personal touch. I love it. I love the change. Rabata is classic Japanese barbecue. When you think of a Rabata Grill, you think marinated, Japanese style. It's easy to execute. And do you know what? It cuts a little bit of slack in the kitchen. It gives the kitchen a bit of time. Okay. Now, all of you, sit down and tuck okay. in. Thank you so much. Please. Thanks, Gordon. That looks so damn good. Doesn't it? With word out to the locals and the college students about the Chester's new vibe, this hotel is ready for business. How are y'all doing? Checking in? Yes. Checking in for two under Sanford. As the new younger clientele begin checking in, it's clear the renovated rooms are a hit. This is How awesome. How nice is this? It feels so big and so bright. It's just wow. We need one of these comfortables at home. While the rooms are proven to impress, the renovated beer garden is also creating a buzz with students, parents, and locals. Yeah. We need to get a little taste. Yeah, everybody needs to order something different. <laughs> Fried green tomatoes. Know. Do you want anything from the grill? That's my, uh, my little one. Of everything. What are you drinking, buddy? David seems reinvigorated as an owner and is really getting into it. Let me get your glasses. Just call them out to me. I'm thrilled to death. Just looking out there and seeing people eating good food and drinking good craft beers and conversing is uh, exactly the kind of environment I wanted out there. I need a burger medium, a fish and chips, pulled cool pork. And without Suki in the kitchen, the new head chef is doing a fantastic job of making wonderful meals and getting them out in a timely manner. That is it for high one. So now we're working high two. Make him sweat, God damn it! There you go. All right, buddy. The biggest thing Gordon has done is giving me a new sense of confidence and an opportunity to have my wife be my wife again. My favorite has been the uh, Gordon's hamburger. And I'm not a hamburger eater, and it's a fantastic and it's a money back guarantee. I'll give you money back if you don't like it. Okay, thank you. That's the best burger in Starkville without a close second. It is. It is so, this is the best so of everything. Now that the Hotel Chester is catering to what the locals want, and with Suki and David embracing the changes, I know my job here is almost done. Time to say goodbye. Hey, Gordon. I'm going to miss you both. We're going to miss you too. Look after each other. Embrace these students, their parents, and get this hotel full. When I see you behind that bar serving pints, yes, that sir. for me is you and your element. All right. Take care of yourselves. Yes, sir. OK? Well done, darling. Seeing you bouncing around out there tonight, happy in front of customers rather than stressed. Good to see you. Take care of yourself. <sighs> wow. Oh. I'm sorry, I forgot one little thing. Can you come with me, please? Yeah. One little thing before I go. The relaunch of the Hotel Chester is a huge success. Can you come with me, please? Yeah. Now Suki and David are on their way to making this hotel the talk of the town. Get in the car, please. But before I leave, I have one more surprise for them. Right, there's one more little thing I wanted to show you. Isn't this place beautiful? That gorgeous pool there. Both of you, come in for two seconds. Now, living in that tiny room with no windows is not the way to live. So, this is your new apartment. I rented this for the next six months, and I'm sure when the business kicks off, you'll have sufficient funds to oh, rent this apartment. Oh, I love it. Open plan kitchen, lounge. Have a quick look at the bedrooms through there. Beautiful. This is just what we really needed for Dave and me to get away. Uh, there we go. Oh, Dave, this is nice. Oh, this is, this this is, is nice. This is so sweet. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Some time out. That is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you again. That's awesome. I'm just damn flabbergasted, actually. Being on site and not having time out of your hotel, you were blind to the potential on your doorstep. It was ridiculous. We thought Gordon was just coming here to help us with the business. He ended up being helping us emotionally, our marriage. He very much wanted for us to be together, and that was so lovely. 
That's pretty damn awesome. No question mm, about it. Really, really nice. Yes. Thank you again. Now I'm going to hug you too. <laughs> Take care of you. Okay. I'm going to kiss you too. So <laughs> Spend some quality time together. Uh, you deserve it. Good night and good luck. All right. Bye, Gordon. Bye-bye now. It's a new start for me, and it's just definitely a new start for Suki. So I'm going to get naked in the pool right now. <laughs> it's so nice to see two people finally happy. Strawberries on fucking sushi. What was she thinking? Since my visit, the Hotel Chester's bookings have gone up. Have y'all stayed with us before? No, this is the first time. And the guests are enjoying the new improvements. It's just not generic, run of the mill. I think, I think this is something special yeah. now. It does feel special. Like it's, it's actually had a touch of care given yeah. to it. With the new menu and beer garden, the hotel has become a local hit with the college kids. I don't know what this yeah. is, but I enjoy it. Craft beer you had? Uh huh. I mean, it was outstanding. You was know? it? Yes. I mean, the local brewery, Mississippi, plus you had a mix of everything. Oh, so you had the uh, sampler. Had the, sampler. Sampler was there. the new buzz around town means the Hotel Chester is now bringing in thousands of guests every weekend. And David and Suki are working as a team again. Next March 8th, was it booked? for a reception for about 150 to 200 people. So they want all about 36 rooms for two nights. Gordon has saved us. Our relationship as husband and wife is better. We'll be, we are now partners. I'm gonna give y'all a hug. Come on, Jill. I'm Get so excited. Come on, guys. What Gordon has done for us means everything to us. And I think Gordon's helped to put the hotel on the map. Let's go suck face for a while. <laughs> I travel to Harpers Ferry, West Virginia, a small, beautiful town outside of Washington, D.C. That is where I met Karen Townsend. Good morning, welcome. Nice to see I'm you. Karen Townsend. Karen, good to see you. A woman who has a wacky way of running a hotel, which is also her home. Let me tell you, I never expected to see the things I saw. Oh, shit. Wow, but dusty. Do you sell these? We do. A convenience store complete with hideous dolls in the dining room. What is that? Oh, these are my famous baskets. There were baskets everywhere, including ones with bugs in them that were even up for sale. Yep, oh. that's private. I found her clothes locked up in a wardrobe in my room. It's like garments from the Civil War. The thing with Karen is, the person she trusts the most spends her time painting murals over destroyed walls and disturbing customers, and she's not even an employee. Didn't have purple glasses earlier. Leave them alone. Okay. What is she doing to your hotel? It doesn't then... go outside. I mean, it's not a hole to the outside. You can't just band-aid this place. Karen was so confused to why any of this was a problem, including the food. That's a disaster. Disaster trout. Which was dreadful. It looks like a soup. It was in the fridge, and then they microwaved it. From the fridge to the microwave. Everything was frozen. You're just hoarding stuff, Karen. This is how much we need. We keep running out of stuff. And the kitchen was a disaster area. Are these TV screens? What are those? Microwaves. Oh, my God. Everywhere I turn, there's just junk everywhere. No organization whatsoever. You're boiling a burger. Why aren't you cooking it from fresh? We make them ahead of time. After learning the burgers were boiled, I honestly thought it couldn't get any worse. That's the rotisserie chicken. You get it from the freezer. Disgusting. But then I saw the frozen store-bought chicken that was being microwaved. That is the worst thing I've seen so far. I'm done. And I had to stop the madness. I'm so sorry, but you, as customers, deserve better. You're not going to act responsible for it. I will. We're shutting it down. As my journey continues at the Towns Inn, the staff has finally had enough. Gordon, this is the worst restaurant I ever worked in in my life. I need Karen to start opening her eyes because my time is running out to help her. You don't even think there's a problem. That's what worries me. The practices are so bad. I'm just so fucking up. You have to take responsibility. I'll do what I can do. Look at this shit. Look at this. You gotta tell me that this is a good chicken. I've eaten it, like I said, yeah. This is crazy. You can't not go to the store and buy stuff and resell it. Can't I? Aren't you aware of what you're doing? 
Do you actually care? Yes. You I do, do care. Which part of this hotel do you care? Every part. This is how delusional you are. That this is a good chicken. What's in this one here? Stuff that we microwave. Pre -cook. Yes. Yes. What's that? Eggplant. So everything's just reheated in the microwave. Yes. Yes. We're in danger of being shut down by the health authorities. I'm sorry, folks. Basically, I take responsibility. I'm sorry. I'm very ashamed and. I am fed up from not being heard. It doesn't matter what I say. Karen is going to do what she want to do. What's going on? Court, I'm just, I don't have no help, man. I told her she won't listen. Perform like this. I can't. I, I can only. I can't. You can't. I you can't. Just, it's, 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 you're gonna get fucking arrested. I, I won't get arrested. Put in jail for killing some damn body. I, Gordon, this is the worst restaurant I ever worked in in my life. The practices are the problem. Right. The sort of the way that everyone's walking around in denial. They are, but I'm there's not. No, but there's no standards though. You're not maintaining a level that they yeah. deserve. Yeah, I know that. I know that, Sheldon. So why have you become like a zombie and following her motions? I'm not. I was, I'm trying to fix it. Have you it. given up? No, I have not given up. I have not given up. You're just as bad as she is if you don't put your foot down and say no. I tell her no, 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 and she keeps on doing it. Someone I, needs to draw a line. I have drawn a line. It doesn't matter. I can only do so much for it. This is not my place. Uh, my apologies, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so sorry. Sorry. What a joke. Have you seen any of this stuff going on here? Do you have any idea what's going on? What's this? Pre-cooked bacon. Pre-cooked from when? It's dated. They, they do but it every day, just about. Right? No, they don't. When was that cooked? That's not today. If they did, honestly, let's see what it says. 10.31. We're in November the 6th now. This is insane. Look at that in there. Don't you drain that, or it just sits there in its blood? And in here? That's a freezer. God damn it. What is that? What's that noise? That's the fan. What a nightmare. <sighs> And Karen, you've got no idea that this is going on like this? What is that in there? That's dishwater. No, that's french fries in there. Fries? Why is the water so dirty? Nobody didn't change it. Sorry? Nobody didn't change it, sir. But you're cooking fries from there tonight in that water. I saw them fill up the fryer twice. It sucks. Where'd you get the ham from? She bought it at the store. Holy crap. It's a spiral cut. They cut it and put it in here. And then uh, use it for side of ham for breakfast. When was the last time this was clean? Uh, last year when I cleaned this, Chef. Last year when we cleaned the oven. We're in November. Last year. Yes, sir. I asked Karen, I said, Karen, we need to shut down so we we, we gotta we gotta do maintenance. Look at the mess. Why have you let it go like this? I didn't know that they were doing things that were not Karen, that proper. You... No, but let, listen to me, Jeff. This stuff bullshitting the guy, okay? Let's tell him the truth here. Okay? I asked for some new equipment. I can't get no new equipment. Why not? I've been here for four years. I've been asking for new equipment. I can't work with this shit here. Look! Look at that! I'm fucking pissed. I've been asking for this. I asked for new equipment. How long do you think this shit's gonna last? It ain't gonna last forever. I'm just so fucking fed up with every damn thing. I can't get no help. Me and Jill pulled you out of this. 
and now I ask for some help for some equipment that you can't spend on it, but... But right. this is working, you and that's auctions. working. Look at this shit! Look at this! Turn of the damn line. I'm just so fucking fed up with every damn thing. Look at this shit! Look at this! Tired of the damn line. You can't expect to work in this. Are you greedy with the money? I'm in debt. I'm barely breaking even. Let's get real. They're at their wits' end. They're done. They're finished and they're a spent force. I've been cooking for 20 years and I never had this problem. We have to step up. I mean, look at the kitchen. It's atrocious. Look at this here. Would you work in this? I do. <laughs> um, it's so funny with you. No, it's not funny. I do but I... laugh. Look at the mess. Can't do it all. You own this place. But I delegated the restaurant to them. But and Karen, then... the bottom line is you have no idea how to yeah. run a restaurant. And all you're doing now is blaming the staff you put no, in there. No, no, I'm just... No, but they're taking yeah. the heat. Yeah. And I, your I... problems aren't their problems, but they become yeah. their problems because look at the mess. Well, you don't even right. think there's a problem. That's there what worries me. Practices are so bad. That's what I try to say. Why has it got this bad? You have to take responsibility. You're ignorant, oblivious, and delusional. I'll do what I can do. It's not good enough. I'm going to my room. Excuse me. I've seen enough shit for one night. Oh, man. Fuck it. Thank God somebody else sees it other than us. This is what we deal with on every day. It's nothing different. I lost different. my damn hat. It's in there. I'll find it. I know where you threw it. You know, we could have done this without Ramsey. I mean, no. anybody can. No, not with her. Not Jeff, with her. I don't have. I, what do I spend on myself? Now, I'm doing the best I can. I borrowed money and went out and bought more refrigerators. Then, oh, we need freezers. I know I care. I know I care. Why, So don't. Why didn't we just tone down the menu? The menu is what you all do. You could have told me that these are the things we I need to do and this is why. I will tell you, Jeff, I have no stake in that menu. I thought that's what you and Jill wanted. No, that's not well, it. I wanted to tone to agree down. To disagree me, then. And Jeff, you get your way. You work hard. I agree. No, I'm just saying. But over the year, you have averaged 44 hours a week. No, that's, I'm not, I'm not and you're paid for a manager. That. No, no, I'm that's just not saying. That many hours. No, Karen, no, I'm not even talking about that. Jeff. Yeah, but that, that's. I'm listening, Jeff. You're not hearing me, Karen. What a mess. I mean, one of the worst states of a kitchen hotel in I've ever seen in my entire career. Also, a owner that is delusional, and she's convinced herself that the place is run properly. And, you know, I'm really uneasy about just being in here. The smell is appalling. Everything feels dirty and just... And I'm not convinced that even the bathrooms are that clean. I'm gonna run a quick test. Quick bacteria test. There's a communal bathroom that I am uncertain about. When this thing reads 30, it indicates that it's a sort of um, a, a decent level of hygiene. Basically, it's clean. Anything over 30, then it gets into the danger zone. <sighs> this is where the smell is really bad in here. There's crap everywhere. It's just so unhygienic. Undo that. I just want to. Doesn't feel clean. To get a good reading, rub the swap underneath the mat. The smell under here is appalling. In these crevices, there's dirt. That's gross. That's gross. That is disgusting. Snap it, let the liquid go down. Give that a shake. In. Holy crap. No, no. I'm unconvinced that this place is clean. Everything smells. It's very difficult for you to identify the smell, but in here, it really stinks. So, just 
It's just the smell from here, the stains everywhere. And what scares me is the fact that the kitchen took a year to get cleaned. God knows what this tub so pretty gross. Now, pop that in there. I'm not sure when this place was cleaned properly. In. Oh my God. Karen. Is Karen in here? Karen, just come upstairs, please. Two seconds. Please, let's go. Quick. Come in. I've just done a swab test with the carpet. I told her the smell is gross. Anything above 30, you're in the danger zone for unhygienic practices. And it's not fit for customers. What do you think the reading is? 100. 100. 50. 50. 60. 70. 70. 803. 803. Oh my god. Oops. 803. Oops. Burn it. That's not down. an oops. That's no. a oh no. 103. <laughs> wow. This is just the carpet. You can't be that bad. We get a lot of bikers, bicyclists Karen, and hikers. You're paying $130 to get out of bed and step on a disgusting, stinking carpet. It smells like there's crap all over the floor. Probably because there's crap on the floor. Probably. Could be. What does that mean, could be? My first shift here, you were in the bathroom, and I think you had an accident on the floor, on the mat. Oh, my God. I mean, yeah. There have been times when I have had diarrhea, but it doesn't happen very often. But, um, no, I, I didn't realize that there was that problem. Fucking hell. All day, both of you have been in denial. Not one of you told me about the problems. Not one of you taken any formal responsibility. You were happy to serve that food to me lunchtime. You were happy to mosey around and piss around on the walls and paint silly pictures. This is a travesty. This is shocking. Your staff knows it, but you two are oblivious. But the rest of the room is dusted and clean. It is. What? It's not, he's, not focused, he's not talking about the room. It's not about the rug. It's not about the food. It's about the whole picture. Look at the cage. You're yelling. Am I not allowed to yell, Sarah? Because someone has to, because you're not. He's trying here to help us. Stop being in denial. It's not about the rug and this perfectly dusted thing that this is not going to make a difference. The whole picture, the whole thing. What are you scared of, Karen, admitting? Well, I'm working 16 hours but, a day yeah, and spending every time and money. That. These are rooms, too, that I get positive yes. feedback about. Oh, my god. I'm, I'm serious. A lot of positive. There you go again. No, you can't be that. No. No, I, no, I, I, I want to these things. I am not sleeping in this dump. I'm done. I'm out of here. Oh, man. You can't leave. I'm not staying in here. Ramsey, don't go. Karen. This is a travesty that you're paying $130 to get out of bed and step on a disgusting, stinking carpet. You're in the danger zone for unhygienic practices, and it's not fit for customers. We get a lot of bikers, bicyclists Karen, and hikers. What are you scared of, Karen, admitting? Well, I'm working 16 hours but, a day yeah, and spending every time that's your excuse. You fall back on that. These are rooms, too, that I get positive yes. feedback about. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm serious. A lot of positive. There you go again. No, you can't be that. No. No, I, no, I, 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 I want to fix things. I am not sleeping in this dump. I'm done. I'm out of here. Oh, man. You can't leave. Ramsey. Don't go. I'm not staying in here. Is this your office in here? That's my living quarters in my office, Your yeah. what? I live there. You live in here? Yeah. What? Let me show you. What? I saw the office sign on the door. But you live in here? Right here. This is my bed. 
I just uh, sleep here. Like this. Are you kidding me? Every night you sleep in here? Yes. Is there a mattress there? No, it's just quilts, cover on them, sheets. You sleep on a board? Mm-hmm. In the winter, I could go upstairs, but I choose not to. I choose to stay here. And which bathroom do you use and shower and I use the ones upstairs. Mm-hmm. What's the room next door? Oh, that's the beverage area. And then beyond that's the kitchen. The beverage area? Mm -hmm. The keg is right on the kegerator is right on the other side there. And then that's the beverage that's cooler the... right oh there. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. So I, I sort of sleep in the kitchen. This is crazy. I love it here. There's no place in the world I would rather be. You're not doing one thing right. You have lost it completely. And you've convinced yourself, in amongst the chaotic mess that you live in, that it's all right. It's not. It's absurd. This is no way for a lady to sleep and live and eat. You shouldn't be living in a kitchen. There's not even a fan or an air-conditioned room. And That's there's true. a tiny cubby hole yeah. cluttered with your junk. Are you OK? I think so. I mean... This is not normal. What's normal in... What's normal? Seriously. I can't even start to think about helping you when you're in such denial. Mm. What the fuck? The next morning, I woke up not wanting to give up on the town's inn seeing how bad the kitchen was and learning that it wasn't clean for over a year. I hired a professional cleaning crew to not only declutter, but to scrub down the kitchen as well. Crap everywhere. Uh, morning. I don't know about being good. Um, well, could be better, could be worse. Yes. So were you, were you sleeping? Ah, uh, I was. I've got a headache. I don't You've know why. Headache, yeah, <laughs> I've had a headache since I've arrived. Uh, I'm still unconvinced where I'm going with you and this business. However, I want you to do something. All right. Something you haven't done properly in a long time. And take that. Yes. And start packing. Ah. Uh. Where I'm, am I I'm, go? Not, I'm not messing around. I haven't got time to mess around. Okay, but we're. Don't worry about that. I just want you to start packing All up. Right. Quickly. I've got enough boxes. Oof. I'm moving fast. You know how fast. important this is, yeah? I do. No, I'm... Time is of the essence. I need you to start packing. And I'm. I'm sorry. Start packing quickly. I'm worried about Karen not listening to me, and I don't think she realises just how bad the business really is. I reached out to her son, Jason, the majority owner of the inn, who has the most to lose if Karen fails to turn it around. Jason, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Yourself? Yeah, very well, thank you. Jason Townsend, yeah, nice likewise. to meet you. Can I take a seat? Uh, first of all, what a beautiful place. Yeah, I mean, it really is. Gorgeous. Yeah. I've fallen in love with this area uh, beyond belief. Um, unfortunately, I haven't fallen in love with the inn. I'm shocked at the setup and what's happening to your mum currently. Yeah. Do you have any idea how bad it is? I think I have a sense, but obviously I'm not here on a daily, regular basis, so I yeah. don't appreciate the in and outs of it. She's in denial. I'm trying to explain things to her uh, in a very calm way, and she's just refusing point blank to understand the logic. I think her, her vision has been both her blessing and her curse in the sense of it's what's allowed her to drive through this and persevere, but it's also what puts her in denial. Have you seen where she sleeps? Yeah. Does that make you feel happy? Not at all, not at all. I mean, we bought this with two main motivations, to let her develop this end business, but also have it as grandma's house, and it's not. We went into this 
looking at it as, as obviously we want it to be some type of investment, but we didn't have a particular game plan beyond just rent out the space to mom. And we want to see it do well, not just to make money, but so that she really can have a life here. And it's just been triage since day one. That's no way to live. No. Has this become a burden on your family now? Or yes, it has. It's because we're concerned for, for her. Uh, it, it, it's a financial burden. This lady wasn't your mother and she was renting from your property, you'd be a lot more severe in the way that place has been handled. We all bought this in part with, uh, with our hearts and not just our heads. And it's, it's that balance between wanting to respect her desires to, to, to make this business what she wants it to be, but also realize that if it's not gonna be a, a profitable business and if there's gonna be a cost, not just financially, but physically and emotionally, we need to, we need to shut it down. Now, this is your mum. You know, this is not a cousin or a niece or a nephew. This is your mum, so um, she needs to hear that. It's affecting you personally, financially. It could drag your family down. You're not her safety net. Yeah. I need you to have a word with her and how we're not prepared to move forward unless she's going to commit to change. And I'm talking long-term change. Mm -hmm. She needs help, yeah. and she needs help urgently. I think I this one. After spending time this morning with Karen's son, we both agree, in order for the business to succeed, he needs to confront his mum that a major change needs to happen. Well, Karen, um, first of all, um, I spent this morning catching up with Jason. Oh, OK, good. And just trying to get him up to speed with what I've been discovering. Mm -hmm. You know I'm not happy. And I think deep down inside that you can't be happy in this current existence. So I want you to listen to Jason. As you know, we've been talking a lot about what's going on here, why we're here, mm -hmm. what we want with the business. Mm -hmm. You're my mom, but you're also my, my tenant. And so I have two main goals and objectives with this place. And uh, one is, is a financial one mm -hmm. uh, for your sake, for my sake, for our family's sake. And then my second objective is to um, encourage and support you and your life. You're not just an innkeeper, you're my mom, you're, you're a grandma. And for us to enjoy all those things, we have to, I think, make some changes here. It's not sustainable financially, emotionally, and, and, and physically. I just don't see the business in such a negative light as you do. I, I look out my but window. You realize most people I, do, yeah. I, I look out my window, and there's the Potomac River and the train station. You can't see out the window, my darling. Oh, I can't. Above it. No, no, no. I mean, I, uh, there, okay. Uh, uh, but gotcha. uh, even even the bags of clothes yesterday and mm -hmm. now the boxes of clutter, people don't live like this. You, you, you have to get out of there and you have to start living your life completely different to what you've been doing. I'm not here for three months, Karen. I'm here for a short time mm -hmm. to give you everything I've got to get this place fixed. And if you can't listen to Jason and you're not prepared to listen to me, I'm not asking you any longer. We're all working for the same goal I, here. Yeah, I'm, I'm listening. I, I, I'm mm -hmm. telling you, it needs to stop. For your sake, for my sake, for our family's sake, I can't keep renting the house out to you if we can't get a business that is consistently profitable. The place is in jeopardy, and there's not one element functioning properly. And your business is going to take Jason's family down if you don't sort this out. Um, I don't want to burden my children at all. So that, that is something that is high priority for me. But you have to come to terms with yourself that it's broken, it's wrong, and you have to change. I, and I'm willing. Whatever you propose, I'll try. Otherwise, it's game over. Let's move forward. I'm agreeing to help. I'm going to put a plan in place, but uh, you can't continue the way you're doing it. You know that. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you. Do you know what his plan is? I have no idea. After Karen packed up her belongings, I had my team start the renovation process while I found a place close by for Karen to move into. Hi, Karen. Are you well? 
I'm very well, thank you. Good. Let's step mm -hmm. inside. Something I'd like to uh, All right. show you. Come in, please. What a lovely place. Do you like it? I do. What do you like about it? Um, well, it's not cluttered. <laughs> it's not cluttered, is it? <laughs> yes, I like that. When I saw where you've been living for the last 12 months, mm -hmm. I was appalled. You shouldn't be going to bed on a piece of wood. I know. You shouldn't be doing that. If we're going to make a change, then you have to step back. I and I mean step back from the business. Mm -hmm. And that means giving yourself some space. So I've done something, mm -hmm. and I'm paying for it out of my own pocket, and I've rented this space for you for the next couple of months, <laughs> two months. Two months, OK. Two That's months. great. Give yourself a break. You can relax, watch a bit of TV. I haven't had a television since 1993. So this is really a big change, yeah. So since 1993. Well, even if you're not going to watch TV, mm -hmm. read, oh, relax. I can do. And just mm -hmm. take in the view. Mm -hmm. And if you decide to move back in there and you convert one of the rooms and it's got an ensuite bathroom, that's all fair and well. But then you need to separate the difference, mm -hmm. not in a box. I like this. I feel comfortable here. Uh, have a look upstairs. There's a, a beautiful bedroom there okay. and a full-size bed. All right. <laughs> There's a ensuite bathroom and I see. a wardrobe to yes. yourself. Big bathroom. Very nice. I could go to sleep right now. Wake me up in two hours. We've got work to do. <laughs> OK. All right. <laughs> that, that was comfortable. Um, Karen, you need to... You need to start thinking about being a boss, being an owner. With that comes certain responsibilities. What was it like for you to be an owner? What, what's the important? Well, the important thing was serving the guest and trying to nurture a good relationship with my employees. Right, that means setting an example, yes? Yes. And being the face of the inn. Yes. Right. What do you think is the most important? thing about being the face of a business. Having a presence. Yes. Standing out like an owner. OK. You need to walk this historic town looking like an innkeeper, polished. Okay. Now, I feel bad about asking a lady to glamorise herself, <laughs> so I'm not trying to be detrimental. It's just okay. I'm going to send you off for a makeover. OK. When was the last time you went and had a facial, got your hair done, and bought a new dress with a, a bright colour. I don't think I've done that since I was 13 years old. When was the last time you went for a blow-dry? Never. I mean, I, I have a blow-dryer, but I, I never go to a salon. Right. Mm -mm. When was the last time you had your nails done? Never. Mm -mm. Never? Correct. And that was never a priority for me, oh, but you're... you're but Did we're going to make it. Yeah. We're okay. going to make it a priority mm -hmm. because it's about you. Mm -hmm. It's a business. You have to front it, and that mm -hmm. that comes with an image. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you're up for a change. I want you to feel better. I want you to enjoy your life. I want you to appreciate what your team can do for you, and hopefully just break the mold a little bit. 100. percent You're happy with this? I'm ready to enjoy Good. it. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. So much. Uh, I have a security deposit here, so it's a rental. Okay. No murals. All right, yeah. we'll leave it the way we found it. Thank you. See you shortly. All the best to you. Yeah. Do you want me to turn on the TV for you or not? Um, not yet. <laughs> I'm going to take this one step at a time. YouTube? Um, I've seen a few things on YouTube, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Instagram? Never. But my granddaughter is teaching me. Selfie? Taking a picture of myself? Oh, never. Uh-uh. Tinder? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Welcome to the dark ages. Enjoy. <laughs> This was one of the toughest makeovers my team has ever taken on. We had not only moved Karen out of the town's inn, but packed up all her clutter before transforming the space. Good morning. How are you feeling? Excited. 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 Yes. The sun is shining, and there seems to be a new, bright breath of fresh air on the town's inn. We're missing somebody. Karen. We are. 
She's been busy over the last 24 hours. I'm hoping you notice a change. Oh, my God. I don't even dress like this to go to church, do I? <laughs> now somebody's looking like an owner of an inn. Yes. You look amazing. For someone with an Amish Mennonite lifestyle, well, yeah, I look radically different. <laughs> you look amazing. She looks so different. Karen, you look good. Yep. Really good. Are you ready to go inside? I've been dreaming of this moment. Right. So, yeah. um, follow me. Let's go. Come on, all of you. Oh. Oh. What's missing? My bed. Karen's bed. <laughs> Isn't this what a inn should look like? Yes. A tiny little convenience store that is bright and modern and everything is on view. And even if you're not staying in the inn, guests will come in and buy stuff. You can sell stuff properly. It's a proper little boutique. Um, oh, well, well. Um, it looks amazing. Amazing. Wow. What Gordon has done is Phenomenal. The store here looks great. It's like walking into a whole nother place. Please. All right. Whoa! Gone is the dust. Well oh my done. goodness! Yes. Well done. Look at that! Beautiful design. Beautiful. When I walked to this dining room first off, it was dreary yes. and laden with junk. And now we have a proper dining room. Yes. Oh, lovely. Look at the all-day menu. Well, the menu hangs on the wall and it's lovely. written daily according to what you've got available, Jeff. Yes. And when we run out, we run out. We tear it off and we start again. If you turn around, you'll see the custom artwork on the wall. Please do not paint over that. I will not. I will promise, I promise you. Promise. No problem. That's, I love it. That's the only mural we need on the wall. <laughs> Just that. Enough is enough. Yeah. Right, you ready to see upstairs? Yes. Yeah. Oh. As you come up, have a little look at the hallway first, please. Oh, wow. Gone to the baskets. Anyone wants to do a little bit of work, a little bit of writing? Absolutely. Can sit here. Beautiful. Wow. Jump in. Everything's going to Jump in. Oh, my, oh my God. God. Is this the photography room? That's right. Oh, my God. Oh, what a vision. I can't believe it's the same oh, wow. room. New sheets, new bedding, and a new carpet. It's beautiful. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, my God. No more murals on the wall. We have a nice, stunning wall. I love it. No more Brillo pads in the wall. They've gone. <laughs> I love it. And you have your very own wardrobe. <laughs> no padlock on it. <laughs> How nice is that? Yes, you can use the wardrobe. It is exquisite. My family thinks I'm so set in my ways that I'm not going to like any of these changes and I'm going to go right back to the old way. I know that's what they're thinking. And they couldn't be further from the truth. My team has spent the last two days cleaning out the kitchen by getting rid of the microwaves, refrigerators, and freezers. I've created a much smaller menu that is manageable for the kitchen staff to execute. Please, take your menu and pass them on. Oh, wow. Oh, I love it. Oh. Now, what do you think? Could it be more beautiful and appealing? Isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, let's be real. The kitchen is tiny. So, a small, dynamic menu as the seasons change, we go through to spring, and some of them will increase on a daily special, only according to what business is about. That makes okay? sense. <laughs> and so we're not buying unnecessary, and we're not adding 10 more appetizers and entrees on there just because we want to look busy. No. Keep it plain and simple. Keep it plain, delicious, and simple. Let's go through the dishes. A high street burger. No water. <laughs> uh, no water. No. Uh, beautiful pate, wonderfully seasoned. <laughs> a griddle in there to sear and cook them to order. Chicken pot pie. Little modern twist on a salad niçoise, but we've done it with salmon. Yeah. Homemade granola. Seasonal berries. Cheap and easy to put out that tiny kitchen. And then, of course, the mac and cheese. It does not go in the microwave. What's that? I don't exactly know what that. What's that? The sports bar of microwaves has gone. Yes. yes. <laughs> Um, visually, what do you think? It's yeah. beautiful. Simple oh, my and God. fast. And it takes a big load off in the kitchen. Yes. And we're not buying frozen, it's all fresh. Right, knife and fork, and have a little taste. Oh, man. Mm. That is good. Oh, my. That's like mama's macaroni and cheese. People will drive from Washington, D.C. to come oh, here oh, absolutely. and eat this way. So good. Yeah. 
Tonight, the Towns Inn relaunches the inn and the restaurant. Right, how are we feeling? Good. Are we ready? Awesome. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Tough week, but it's been instrumental. Let's put this place back on the map, OK? Push the freshness of the menu. I don't want anyone panicking. There's nothing we can't do on the menu. Any issues, we talk about it. If we talk to each other, we prevent mistakes happening. If we shut down, things will happen without us knowing. Karen, anything you'd like to say to the team? Thank you, and I'm looking forward to moving forward. There you go. Oh, that's there. great. Good luck. Let's go, guys. Thank you. Let me help you down the stairs. Thank Good you. to see you. Welcome to the Towns Inn. Look at that dude checking in, it looks like. Immediately, the guests see the changes in the dining room and the rooms. Yeah, it's beautiful, nice. yeah. Wow, look at this. Yes. Very nice. I love this bed. This is pretty nice. Oh, look at this. You got a nice armoire. And throw our stuff in here. How do you like the changes? Looks good. This I can definitely say this is way better, <laughs> way better. than what I left. This is definitely an improvement, yes. <laughs> Here's to a new restaurant in town. Indeed. That's a burger with french fries, VLT, and a mac and cheese. Great. The kitchen is functioning more efficiently with a smaller menu and is preparing the dishes cooked to order. And Karen is overseeing the inn as an owner and successfully treating this place like a business for the first time. How's everything so far? I heard you like to see it. Order in, please. Yes, I got okay. five minutes on the burger, chef. And we got two orders of fries. Fine, nice and crispy, the fries, and seasoned beautifully, yes? Yes, sir, chef. Well done. That is outstanding. So now we have a place to come in the wintertime. Good, so you're going to come back. Yeah, we're That's locals. Great. What does it mean, a small little local bistro to the town? How good is that for you? Actually, it's huge. Uh, we need more local bistros like this. We're really great. excited to have it. <laughs> good to see good you. Take care. Good night. Thank you, guys. Hey, good, night. Good, night. good night. Good night. Thank you. Take care. Good night. Happy customers. Wow. I'm off. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Don't lose that passion. I won't. Yeah? Continue enhancing this kitchen and stick together. Yes. Yeah, you're strong together, you two. We yeah? will. Okay? Thank yeah? Go ahead. I love you. You <laughs> Yeah? Take care. We all love See you soon. Right. <laughs> See you soon. Look after each other. We will. Okay? Tonight proved that this place can work. The potential is incredible. The locals are dying to see this place at the forefront of this amazing town. The area is historic. Make sure your inn follows down that line. Karen, I know changes are going to be hard. I yeah. know you're going to resist, but you cannot afford to go back. You've got to go forward. So I know how much this means to you, and I know what kind of jeopardy is at stake if it doesn't work. So think of the consequences. It's not just you. Mm -hmm. It's your son, your son's mm -hmm. family, and the legacy that you want to continue mm -hmm. with. So I'm leaving you all the tools. Push forward. Mm -hmm. Promise me you're not going to go back to your old ways. This is more fun and more effective, and right. I just have seen the positive response from everybody. You, you did the, the, the groundwork here, thank so you. thank you. You have an amazing inn. Yeah. Okay. Uh, amazing location, beautiful Do not village. move those clothes back in from Lamont's basement. Uh -huh. Get rid of this stuff, let it fly off the shelves, mm -hmm. and Wait start getting mm -hmm. this place back on the map mm -hmm. and enjoy that lovely little cottage. Take time out and spend time with the grandkids and mm -hmm. just let the business breathe. Yeah. I promise. Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right. <laughs> Gordon's visit has been extremely educational. This is good. This is right. This is what it should be. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I want the end to be successful, and I think it will be now. Take care now. Thanks, Karen. Good night. Wow. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, come back. <laughs> come back. I want to see him go. <laughs>